Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Leah Lord, and I'm back at it again with another video. If you're new to my channel, hey girl, hey, my name is Leah. I make videos, story times, hauls. I do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, something slight for the kids. You know the vibes. And if you're a returning subscriber, hey friend, how are you? I hope you're doing wonderful, fabulous, beautiful, amazing. So today's video is going to be a get ready with me. It's also going to be an unpopular opinions. I'm very excited about this video because I've been planning it for a few months now and I finally got around to filming the video for you guys. So today's video is going to be an unpopular opinions about the TV show Girlfriends. I've watched this show from start to end about like six times. I feel like it's a rite of passage for all millennial, Gen X, and even some of the, the Gen Z girlies are getting into it and I love that. So I got to talk about one of my favorite TV shows and I'm excited to see what you guys think about my opinions and I'm excited to chat in the comments down below. I really like this look that I did today. If you're not new here, you know that this is my staple basic, you know, nude brown look. So it's slight, nothing too serious, no colors, just a lot of browns for a brown skin girl <laughs> yeah so this is my signature look and today's a little bit different because I actually did accessorize I'm getting new into the accessory game I've recently discovered that the way to elevate your look is by accessorizing and accessorizing well everyone who buys jewelry knows that they could be a tad bit expensive for some really good quality jewelry and that's why I love Ana Luisa. Ana Luisa is a jewelry brand that offers affordable jewelry starting at just as low as $39. They offer tarnished resistant jewelry that will last you a bunch of years. It'll be strong and it'll stand the test of time and it will also be tested against allergies. So for those of you who have sensitive skin just like I do, rest assured that this jewelry will be something that you can try out. So I'm going to show you guys the three pieces that Ana Luisa sent me and I'm super excited about all of them because they look honestly so good we're gonna start up top with the earrings so these beautiful earrings that you see right here are called Toda. They are their gorgeous double hooped earring. They are made out of cubic zirconia, 14 karat gold on recycled sterling silver, and they're about like 1.2 millimeters in thickness. I love these earrings so much. I've been wearing them every single day since I opened up the packaging and they have not bothered my skin in the slightest. They're so beautiful. I always get compliments on them and I love how small and dainty they are. They're perfect for any occasion. This next piece is a bracelet called Atlas. It is 14 karat gold on stainless steel. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I wear it like a few times a week when I go to work and I'm going to the office and I want something to complement my outfit. I feel like it does just enough. It's dainty, it looks nice, it's not too flashy, it doesn't draw too, too much attention. It's just a nice complimentary piece. The last product that I received is this Zodiac necklace in the sign Aries. It is cubic zirconia, 14 karat gold on stainless steel. Once again, it is beautiful, it is soft, it is elegant, and it does just enough to give you recognition, but also not to take away from anything else that you have going on. They're all beautiful complimentary pieces. But yeah, I really love all my jewelry pieces that Ana Luisa sent me. I think they're gorgeous. I think my favorite is the Aries necklace because if y'all know me, y'all know I'm the biggest Aries the biggest okay and so i love this necklace a lot i think it speaks a lot to my personality it's just dainty it's cute but it also looks super expensive and i never even had to break the bank so that is the best part of all of this to be honest and i will say that i am somebody with super sensitive skin and after wearing these pieces i do not have any breakouts or rashes or irritations or anything like that and that is because their products go through rigorous testing to make sure that they're testing for allergies and things of that nature so people with sensitive skin just like me will not have to suffer <laughs> and if you're not fully satisfied with your product you can send it back for a replacement or a reimbursement no questions asked we love a company that puts their customers first <laughs> so if you're interested in any of these products that i showed you here today don't forget to open the description box down below and click the link i have a code for you guys because although anna luisa is affordable i'm gonna get you more money off because that's what i do benevolent queen if you want to save 20 percent off don't forget to use my code lealor20 that is lealor20 it's also in the description box down below once again check out anna luisa and shop some fantastic pieces okay you guys so we are gonna get started with the get ready with me um i already did my eyebrows and i put my lashes on because i feel like it takes a lot of concentration for me to do both of those things and quite frankly i cannot speak and focus at the same time or else the whole video will be just me applying my eyebrows so instead of you know wasting a bunch of time i did that off camera and right now we're just gonna do my base so let's just get started with that so as you guys can see from the title of the video in this get ready with me we will be talking about uh, my unpopular opinions about girlfriends the tv show um if you are black 
if you're a black woman if you're a millennial if you are a early gen z if you are a gen x person then you've probably most likely seen girlfriends um i feel like watching girlfriends is a rite of passage for most black women especially in america and there's just like a, a lot to discuss and unpack when it comes to the characters um the things that they go through as they progress in life romantic relationships and things of that nature so in this video i just wanted to talk about that a little bit because i have some thoughts i have some thoughts and i have some things to say and some people will be dealt with in this video so if you want to see that stick around obviously before we get started i'm going to be talking about the show Show, which means if you haven't seen it yet there will be a lot of spoilers so you know do with that what you will but don't say I didn't warn you I'm gonna be telling everything everything that happened in the show. So Girlfriends is a TV show that follows the lives of four young women from like their late 20s to their early 30s um, and these women have been friends for a certain period of time and the show follows their lives as they live in like Los Angeles California as they go through various relationships marriages divorces motherhood career changes and things of that nature so the four friends are tony joan lynn and maya joan and tony have known each other the longest they grew up in kind of like the same area in california and then they went to college together where they met lynn so they met lynn in college the three of them became friends and after college joan who was in school for law she became kind of like an associate lawyer or something like that i'm not sure what they're really called and um she had a receptionist Maya so that's how she met Maya and when Joan met Maya she introduced Maya to the whole friend group now when Maya was first introduced she got along with everyone essentially except for Miss Tony okay and there's a reason why she didn't get along with Tony but we'll get to that later so um the women all know each other from various points in their lives and you know they go to parties together they host like holidays together they're just involved in like a lot of each other's lives they're each other's confidant they're each other's strength they're each other's tribe essentially so that's basically what girlfriends is about now the way i want to do this is i kind of want to talk about um, each person's storyline but i want to do it from the person i believe is the least problematic to the person who's the most problematic right so with that being said we're gonna ooh ooh that gave me sean t adams a little bit <laughs> um first we're gonna get started with maya who i believe is the least problematic So Maya's individual story is that she is, you know, just like a down girl, you know, she's one of the home girls. She's one of the girls from like the neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? Maya is not bougie. She wasn't raised with a bunch of money. She was raised from a single mother. So she's kind of like very humble in that way. Maya, when she was in high school, got pregnant by her longtime boyfriend, now husband, Darnell, and they had a son whose name is Jabari. And so Maya, she, at the beginning of the show, she worked as a reception for Joan at the law firm and that's just basically her story now Maya went through a bunch of different things um, as the show progressed she cheated on her husband a little bit they got divorced then they got married again then Maya got pregnant she lost the baby unfortunately and she became an authoress an authorist at some point so her life went through like a bunch of different changes but I personally feel like her life had I don't want to say the the least dramatic changes because I feel like Lynn's didn't have much of a plot honestly i think that maya is the least problematic because she's a really really good friend she's always supportive and she always seems like someone the ladies turn to when they need to speak with they don't necessarily turn to her when they need help like a place to stay because she ain't playing them games honey but she is somebody that you can talk to and you can you know assume that she's gonna give you real honest and open advice she's not gonna sugarcoat things she's just gonna tell you how it is I feel like my issue with Maya mainly is that she could be a little bit holier than thou. Um, Maya is a Christian and so she always talks about God and the Bible and stuff like that. But she's not one of those Christians that, um, how, do, how do I say this? She's not a Christian that lives completely by God. So she does things, you know what I'm saying? Like she goes to the club, she still drinks every now and then, she cheated on her husband clearly. Like she's not, she lives her life, but she lives her life like through God, if that makes sense. So that's how maya is and i feel like my issue with her is not that she's a christian but my issue with her is that being that she's gone through a few things you know what i'm saying like she was pregnant at 15 which is not conventional it's definitely not smiled upon it's frowned upon 
heavily to get pregnant at 15 um and then after that she cheated on her husband and it's like even though she's gone through those things she still finds it in herself to judge the people around her and still tell them like that's not of god and god don't like that and oh my god and this and that like she always makes a big deal out of things when people make mistakes even though she's made her own mistakes and i don't like that i feel like we all have somebody in our lives who like always acts as if your mistakes are worse than their mistakes when that's simply not the case unless you've committed a felony or done something extremely egregious when you make small mistakes in your life mistakes that you most likely learn from nobody's better than you you're not better than anybody and nobody's better than you please please so i feel like that's my only issue with maya i think she could be a little bit judgmental of her friends and she can you know throw stones so that's maya so the next person we're going to talk about is Lynn. <laughs> A lot of people have an issue with Lynn because they say that she is a mooch, but I kind of have like a different perspective on Lynn. But first, of course, a little backstory. So Lynn is a biracial woman who was adopted by a white family. She has a sister who is completely white and problematic, but we're not talking about that right now. Lynn grew up with a white family and she was kind of like coddled her whole life. And I think she was coddled because like her parents kind of wanted to make up for the fact that she was adopted. They wanted to make up for the fact that she was adopted. And she also like lived in a predominantly white neighborhood where she didn't really know any other black people. And they couldn't really like teach her her culture. So I think that's why her parents kind of like let her do whatever she wanted. And they didn't really give her like the stability that she needed to be a responsible adult. So I think that when Lynn went to college and she met joan and tony she you know found her tribe obviously but i think that she also found some people who are gonna keep her accountable lynn is the person in the group who has a million and one degrees y'all know how people make that joke that like when black women get bored they get degrees lynn takes that to a whole nother level <laughs> like a whole nother level she has a bunch of degrees, a bunch of bachelor's degrees, a bunch of master's degrees. Like she just goes to school all the time, but she doesn't have a career. She doesn't have a career and she never, ever, ever has a consistent job. Being that she doesn't have a stable foundation for herself financially as an adult, she kind of never really has a place to stay. So she stayed with Joan for like a few seasons on and off. Um, she stayed with Tony for like three episodes because Tony's not here for it and then she stayed with Maya for one season until she became like the manager of like Maya's um residence and she was able to get her own spot so everybody's opinion on Lynn is basically that she's a mooch and she doesn't really do anything for uh I forgot what I was saying but I think I was saying that everyone's opinion on Lynn is that she's kind of like a mooch she doesn't have anything going for herself she doesn't really have a life plan like everyone sees her as like this irresponsible adult basically like woman baby essentially and while i agree that lynn doesn't really have a strong foundation i think that i see it in kind of another way right i see it as lynn knowing that she doesn't want to settle for anything less than the career that was made for her or the job that was made for her um i think that sometimes people in general not even women but kind of specifically black women we can fall into this trap of like settling for things you know we settle for men we settle for like a life that we think we're supposed to have our parents you know they put stuff on us all the time like are oh, you supposed to get married you're supposed to have kids and blah 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 sometimes you don't even know if that's what you want to do nine out of ten times it's really not um you settle for careers because of what people put onto you and i think that lynn was just basically saying she wanted to find something that fit her she wanted to feel fulfilled in what she wanted to do and i think that that's something that i kind of abide by i live my life like that anytime i start a new job if it doesn't fit me if i don't like the people around me if i don't like the energy if i don't like the work i do there's like a lack of transparency anything that doesn't sit right with my spirit i leave i leave i leave because i know that god got me always i'm blessed and highly favored so i'm always going to find another job but also because i don't want a job to drain my spirit for the sake of a check Yes, I need to pay bills. Yes, I need to um, build a life for my future family, but I also need to take care of myself mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. And being in a career or a job that's gonna drain me is not going to do that. It's just not. And so I feel like that's why um, I kind of don't agree with everything that people have to say about Lynn. I think that maybe she should have like, you know, gotten a job just for like the, the minute, you know, but she should definitely be, sticking to her story when she said i'm not gonna settle for anything less than what i deserve 
eventually Lynn did become like an artist and that's something she wanted to do for a long time she was always like playing music at various points during the show so she became an artist and she was able to make money for that and she was able to build a career from it and she genuinely seemed happy at the end of the show so she was able to find what she wanted because she didn't settle and that's the lesson we can learn from Lynn okay don't settle for nothing now the character that I think is the second to most problematic is Miss Tony honey <laughs> Miss Tony Childs, Tony Childs Realty, okay? Is it real estate? Realty? Anyway, it's one of those. Tony Childs is a real estate agent. She comes from like a household of like farmers. She comes from a household of, I think sharecroppers is what she called it. Her parents kind of had like nothing when she was growing up. She has a lot, a lot, a lot of siblings. So she never really had anything for herself. And I feel like growing up in that environment gave Tony a bit of self-hate. Now it's not self-hate in the way that she's like anti-black or she doesn't love herself or she doesn't date black people. It's not that at all. It's kind of like she's elitist. She's classist and egregious as Maya's mother would say. She's very very elitist in the way where like she doesn't date down. She doesn't date men in a certain tax bracket. Um, she works in real estate so she only looks for people who wants to get big houses and stuff like that. She wants nice jewelry. She's always shopping. She's like one of those girlies. Tony is very much so soft life. Tony was soft life before the girls even knew soft life, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna do a voiceover about this part because I feel like as I was watching back my video, I don't think that I conveyed the message in the way that I wanted to. So here's a voiceover. Um, as I just mentioned, Tony comes from like, uh, I wouldn't say an impoverished household. I wouldn't say that, but they definitely were lower class. You know, they were farmers. They were in agriculture. They didn't have all the things that Tony wanted. And Tony, you know, as she was growing up in this household where she had to share basically everything, I think she made up her mind that she wanted it all. She wanted the wealthy man. She wanted the good job. She wanted the big house, the nice ring, the family. She wanted it all. Okay. Um, and I feel like you know, that's why she worked so hard. She worked hard to get into a good college. She worked hard to get a good job out of college. And she worked hard to get herself a nice apartment and start her own real estate business. She worked her ass off so she does not end back up in Fresno, raising a big ass family um, in a situation that she can't really afford the things that she wanted. And I feel like that's a normal thing, right? A lot of people, when they come from certain households, they try their hardest to not end up in those situations again. So she saved an enormous amount of money so that she does not end up back in that situation. And with that being said, now that she has all this money and she has a nice job and she's stable she's financially stable she wants a man who can also keep up with all the things that she wants when you think about it it makes sense this is a woman who goes shopping every single weekend maybe every single day this is a woman who buys designer has a nice apartment a walk-in closet she has everything she's literally ever wanted so why would she want to be in a committed relationship with a man who cannot add on to what she already has i feel like as black women sometimes we end up in these situations where people tell us that we have to settle right we have to settle for less than what we really deserve why should we have to settle for a man who is not in the same tax bracket or in the same financial situation as us if that's not what we really want a lot of marriage is a business. A lot of it is a business. I'm not saying that that's what marriage thrives off of, but realistically in America, a lot of marriage is a business. And so if you end up in a situation with someone who's taking more from you than what they're adding on to you, it kind of makes you always live in a state of fear that you're going to end up in the situation that you were originally in aka tony thinks that she's gonna go back to fresno being with someone who cannot add on to what she's already built for herself so i feel like in that way a lot of people particularly men see tony as being a gold digger but she's not a gold digger she already had her quote-unquote gold she had everything she already wanted before she just wants someone who can keep up with that and i feel like that's completely fine i feel like that's not something that should be frowned upon or anything like that now, Tony does have some things that I don't agree with. I feel like she wasn't always the best friend to all of her friends, especially Joan. Like, at the beginning, she was a terrible, terrible friend to Joan. Um, she tried to, you know, seduce her man. She stole somebody in, like, the first episode from Joan, like an ex-boyfriend or something like that. Like, I wouldn't do that personally, obviously. But I feel like after Tony got married, divorced, had a baby, I feel like those quick, fast changes in her life made her become a better person I personally feel like Tony had the best character arc out of all the women because at the beginning, like she did a lot of things that were like, ooh, side eye. But 
you know, as you watch the season, she definitely became better. I don't think that anybody else had a better character arc than Tony. I also think that she's the funniest out of all the women. I think they're all funny, except Joan. But um, <laughs> I think that she had the the best change as a person. Even when you look at her relationship with Maya, right? At the beginning, I mentioned to you guys that Maya and Tony didn't really get along. That's because Maya is like a homegirl, you know? She's someone who was raised kind of like in the hood so to speak uh she had a baby when she was young tony is not that she's like the complete opposite of her in the way that like she frowns upon stuff like that you know she's elitist as i mentioned um so her and maya kind of like bumped heads a little bit at the beginning but towards the end they were cool like they were going to lunch together like maya was giving her advice on raising a child it was like a thing it was a moment and you could see the change in tony from season one to season four so in in that way tony is my favorite character but um yeah, those are my opinions on her. Now, on to the last character. The last character and the most problematic character. Argue with your mammy. Argue with your mammy. She is the most problematic character. And we're talking about no other than Miss Joan Carol Clayton. Oh my God. Oh my God. I've disliked a few characters and shows that I've watched, but none the way. That I dislike Joan. Like I've disliked characters like um, Joffrey and Game of Thrones and stuff like that because they were evil. But I've disliked Joan more than those people because those people are fictional. You know what I'm saying? Like they've done terrible things. Joan is a fictional character. But we all know someone like Joan in our lives. We all know him. And we all hate him. A lot of people when I ask them like, oh, who's your favorite, um, who's your favorite girlfriend's character? And they all say Joan. And I think that those people need to touch grass. So if that's you, listen to what I have to say. I had to record another voice memo because again, I feel like I didn't give this character justice. But um, unlike Tony, I will give Joan the good dragging that she needs and the dragging that people fail to give her every single time they dissect this show. Um, so a little bit background on Joan. She is, you know, a, a black woman. I think her mother was black too. I'm not sure. I think, yeah, yeah, she's black. <laughs> she's a black woman. Um, and she's from like, kind of like the same area as Tony. Um, she grew up with parents who were both, I feel like, in a good space financially. And so she kind of had everything she ever wanted. She doesn't have siblings. She's an only child. She went to US UCLA with Tony. And after that, she um, went to law school, right? So she went to law school. She graduated. She became a lawyer. She became a junior partner at her firm that she worked at with William. And then after that, um, towards kind of like the end of her career, they wanted to make her a senior partner, but she decided she never actually even wanted to be a lawyer. So she went into the um, restaurant business. So Joan became a restaurateur. And at the end of... The third season, she became kind of like um, on a sports magazine because her bar was actually like a sports bar, right? So it was really popular with a lot of different crowds. And so she kind of got some recognition for that. That's kind of Joan's um, career arc, okay? Um, and at first glance, when you look at her and you look at the parallels of how she behaves with her friends, um, you would think that she is a great friend. You would think that she's a fantastic friend and you would love to have a friend like her. But after you've watched the show for a couple seasons you start to realize how much of a toxic controlling person she is she is a friend to literally no one and don't get me wrong she's had her good moments but i feel like the more and more you watch the show and as you get older and you start to form your own relationships with different groups of women you start to realize that this is not somebody that you want in your life so let's start off with her being a terrible friend from the very beginning season one episode eight i believe was maya's recommitment ceremony um, as I mentioned, Maya got married to her husband Darnell um, while they were in high school. So she decided to get, you know, recommitted to him and they had like a little wedding at their house. It was nothing too big, nothing too fancy. I already told y'all Maya did not have that much money. She was just a receptionist, right? Joan being the woman who always wanted to be married. Her goal in life is to be married and to be a mother and have a big, happy American family family that is the picture of success for joan right with that being said maya's getting married she's like oh my god i want to be part of this i want to help you with the dresses i want to help you with the venue i want to help you with the food i want to help you with everything and instead of being supportive for her friend and providing input where input was necessary she decided to completely try to take over 
this girl's recommitment ceremony. She decided to derail the whole thing. She was being very classes, being very elitist the whole time, making little snobby comments like, oh, well, the dresses are ghetto and I don't want to be, you know, dressed in this. And I, I feel like the venue is this and this, that and the third. And it was just too much. It was too much. When your friend asks you to help with something, you help them in the way they want to be helped. You don't try to make it your vision. That's not what a friend is supposed to do. Now, I thought the wedding thing was going to be the last time Joan showed her ass. Unfortunately, it was not. And what's worse than Maya's wedding was Tony's wedding. Tony is Joan's best friend. They are the two that have known each other for the longest. So you would think if my best friend is getting married, I want to be there for her. I want to be a part of everything. And I want to make sure she has the best experience possible. Miss Joan Kara Clayton did not do that, honey. She really didn't. Um, instead, she did something that was so heinous that it would be completely unforgivable if it was my friend. Joan subtly tried to derail every single aspect of Tony's wedding. For instance, at their engagement party, she kind of made it about her and she kind of talked about the turmoils of her relationship at the moment. She was always having issues with her relationship, but we'll get to that. She decided to talk about the turmoils of her relationship at her friend's engagement party and make it kind of all about her. At her friend's cake testing, which she hosted at her house, she went off in the back room to argue very loudly with her then boyfriend and interrupt the whole entire party. Then after that, she decided to not show up to her friend's um, kind of like bachelorette party that they were having at the house. But before that, she went to her wedding fitting and she disliked every single dress the girl tried on. You can tell that she was not happy that her friend was being married first. Being that she was expected to be the one who, you know, got married first and had the kids and had the, the picture of success, she was not pleased when Tony, the girl who literally is not really a commitment person, got married first. She hated it. She hated it so much. It was seething the whole time. And I think that Tony was trying to hold it down, but there was a really um important scene in the trajectory of this show that kind of just shows like how fed up Tony was with how Joan was behaving. I thought this wedding would be difficult for Joan. I mean, any wedding is difficult for Joan. But then I thought, mm mm, she might be a little jealous of me right now, but she'll get over it because Joan is my best friend. Um, and you know, with that, you can see that this woman was just not, she was not a good friend. She's the type of person that she does things because it makes her look good, not genuinely because she's a good person. Another instance, when Maya got her book deal and she started making a lot more money, she moved up to a bigger house. There was like a lake in the background. It was a gated community. It was a whole big thing and it was a very big victory for her, right? Maya decided to have her family and friends over. She had fish fries. It was like this big gathering every weekend, essentially. Joan, being the person who always had the gatherings and always hosted the holiday parties, didn't like this at all she made little comments like oh you're having another fish ride oh i have to come all the way up here to visit you you live so far and blah blah blah, blah. it was like girl girl i was there for all your little annoying holiday parties and you can't celebrate me when i finally have a victory that is nasty work and she did that continuously anytime her friends had a victory and she was no longer the topic of interest she kind of tried to derail it in any way possible. And it maybe wasn't as explicit as some people will notice, right? But when you watch a show again a couple times like I have, you start to realize that that's exactly what she was doing. She was a terrible friend. And I hate to say it. I hope I don't sound crazy. She was even a worse girlfriend. Let's get to it. Joan wanted so badly to be married and have kids that she was a serial dater. Okay, she was a serial monogamous and she continuously was dating and rotating men, which is fine because that's something you do when you're unmarried and you're trying to find your life partner. Right. The issue is that Joan tried to control every single one of these men. And I hate to agree with men. I really hate it. I hate it. But Joan is the reason all of her relationships ended. I think there may have been one or two that wasn't her fault, if that's even true. But to give you a few instances, there was this one guy at the beginning. Um, I forgot his name. He was like the art critic his name was sean or something like that sean when she first met him he she first of all pursued him relentlessly at the art gallery you could tell this man wasn't even really interested but he decided to give her a chance they start dating blah 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 she finds out he is a nymphomaniac she kind of gets scared she backs away a little bit and it's like what the hell what the hell i didn't even want you at first now that you have me you're scared what's the issue all right cool that relationship with sean ends 
And then after that, I don't remember all of her relationships, but there was another one with a mail carrier at her law firm. And she didn't want anyone to know that she was with him because he was a mail carrier. So he was above her pay grade and it was embarrassing for her. And he was younger than her. Um, and then after that, it was, I think it was William. William is the one that really pissed me off. Because when you watch the show, like William has his flaws, you know, he's, oh, side eye. But he's genuinely a good friend to these women like a really really good supportive friend to them and when Joan finally started dating him she was so mean to him the MLK day um scene where she threw something at his head because he did not spend Martin Luther King day with her girl BFFR are you serious right Martin Luther King day then she, you know, at the end of the season or whatever, she gets engaged to this guy, really great guy, and she has a really big argument with him, and she talks down on him about how much money he has or doesn't have, and how he can't afford this stove, and it's hers, and it's hers, and it's hers, and she's the one making the money, and it's just nasty. Like, everything about Joan is just nasty, nasty, nasty work. And I know some of you may be thinking, like, you just said that Tony did not date anyone that did not make a certain amount of money. So why are you now berating Joan for essentially doing the same thing? She wasn't doing the same thing. That's the difference. Tony was very clear that she would not date men who didn't make a certain amount of money. Joan, however, wanted us to be under the guise that she would date for love. She wanted love, love, love. She was a certified lover girl. She did not care how much money someone made. And that really wasn't the truth. She found a way to nitpick every man she's ever been in a relationship with. Whether it was he was too young for her or... He did not make enough money as her or he did not have on all the nice things or he didn't even have a car or maybe, you know, all, all the things Like she found every single thing wrong with a man as soon as they were in a relationship while they were dating. She didn't find anything wrong with them. But as soon as they were in a relationship, she was firing on all these men about everything that was wrong with them. And that's what I find a problem with. And I feel like that's why I've never liked her. I've, to this day, I don't like her. And I feel like she got the ending she deserved. I said what I said. Argue with your mama. So, you know, um, that's Joan. I feel like she was extremely problematic. She was very toxic. I don't see how the um, team Joan girlies don't see it. But hopefully I've shown you the light. That's my beef with Joan. Everybody knows the Joan. A lot of people tolerate the Jones in their life. Not me, though. Y'all be easy. But everybody knows a Joan. So Joan is definitely the most problematic person to me. And I don't feel like she had good character development. Even when she did get engaged, you know, her husband, he went off to Afghanistan and she felt the type of way about that. She was like, why can't it be me? Like, why is it, why am I always having things taken away from me? It's because you've been an awful person, a terrible person. And God is paying you back. He's getting his lick back for all the shit that you did. Like, all the times that you brought misery upon your friends and you ruined their special days. You know, all the time that you gaslit every single one of your boyfriends. You're getting your lick back. Like, you're never going to be happy until you repent for the shit that you've done. Like, just awful, awful, awful person. So, yeah, that's Joan's story and I'm happy she didn't get a happy ending. She didn't deserve it. So, yeah. That's essentially um, my unpopular opinions about girlfriends. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish my makeup. And then I'm going to come back when I'm fully ready because I am running late. But I'm going to come back, show you guys the final product. And yeah. <laughs>so that is the end of my video i hope you guys enjoyed the discussion i hope you guys enjoyed my unpopular opinions about girlfriends and i hope you enjoyed this look that i pulled together really quickly for you guys once again if you are interested in any of these pieces that i have on today don't forget to open the description box and check out anna luisa i have a code for you guys leolora20 if you want an extra 20 percent off your order don't forget to check them out i'm very satisfied with everything i have on once again don't forget to like comment and subscribe i'll see you guys in the next one love you so much bye Bye.